L1 moment of inertia. This is really the topic of the class, and we're going to do lots of calculations of moments of inertia. Now, let's remind ourselves what that is from the previous chapter. If you have a thin connector to some mass M, and this is going around an axis, what is the inertia of that mass? Now, we know from the other chapter, it's MR squared, and I would like to show you that again by way of a quick review. The kinetic energy is one half MV squared. This is your tangential velocity. Uh, you think of a, like a car going at a certain speed in a circle. And this is one half M. V is omega R squared, that gets squared. And this is then one half M omega squared R squared. I'll put the omega squared second. And the analogous equation, see here, is to consider the MR squared as the inertia for rotation. The one half is there, and then the velocity becomes the angular velocity. So for a rotation, we have this equation. So that's one way of saying it. But let's look at it another way. Suppose we go back to the problem where I'm spinning a mass, you know, here around over my head, and I had to get that thing, you know, sped up. So I had to apply some kind of a torque to get it sped up. So let's go ahead and look at the torque definition is the force times R, so if you have, say, a thin string, and then you have the mass, this is R, that a force here will get this thing going in a, in a circle. So if you look at uh, this equation here, we know that from the previous uh, chapter that the torque is given by I times alpha, just by analogy, where the force is your mass times acceleration, then your torque is your moment of inertia times alpha. So if we do that, we find from this formula, I is equal to, F is equal to MA, so this is going to be MAR over alpha. But remember that A is alpha R, that's how you relate the tangential to the angular. And if you do that, you get M alpha R for the A times R, the alpha, the alphas cancel and you get m r squared. You get the same result that we had before. So I just wanted to show you that the beauty of, of physics, how it's related. And then you get for multiple masses that are all the particles going together with the same angular velocity, you would sum up these which would be the sum of mi ri squared. Now each of the masses, this is like, this is considering like some thing like this that's rotating with some angular velocity omega. Now I wanna write this with the r first and then the mi second. And then I want to consider 
that each of these pieces of mass or small masses, little little bits, I'm gonna call them each one, say a delta M, like that. At first you might say, let's call them delta MI before we take the end of, you know, infinitesimal limit. And then this would be I, Ri squared and delta Mi, like that. Now what about here, like if it's continuous distribution of matter, then we can consider it as a sum of all these little delta Ms, and we wanna to go to the calculus formula. Now I have a, an easy way to understand how to go from summing finite deltas to some, say, continuous integral. Step one, we rip off the eyes. You rip off the eyes. Step two, you replace the delta M with the infinitesimal dm. You know, whatever it is, if it's a delta X, you know, if this happened to be a delta X, then you would go dx. And then the third case is you change the summation sign into a snake, the integral sign. So when you do these three steps, you get i as the integral of r squared dm. And this is what we're going to be looking at in this chapter over and over again, many, many, for many, many cases. The moment of inertia for a continuous distribution of matter. Okay, now here we have two chunks of matter. And we looked at this earlier before. Uh, this would be like a point here and a point there, say so something connecting them, going around. And then here, we have them like this. And the question that we ask is which one has greater rotational inertia? Well, it's easy to spin this one around compared to getting this one to spin that way. And that's because, see, the mass is farther away from the axis than it is in this case. So when you have your general formula, I is R squared dm. See, this R plays the role of letting you know which cases are gonna be greater when the mass is away from the axis.